One of the first ways you learn about solving a system of linear equations is using the substitution method. Let's go ahead and look at some tips to see exactly how this might work. The very first step is you're going to start by isolating one of your variables. It doesn't matter which one you actually isolate, but go ahead and get one of them all by itself. Once you have this done, then you'll go ahead and substitute that variable into the other equation and solve for the remaining variable. You'll actually end up doing this twice, but it's exactly the same process every single time, so just remember to substitute and then solve, and you should be okay. All right, let's get to the examples and see this process in action. So again, the very first step is to just pick a variable and then solve for it. Uh, since I have no preferences here, I'm gonna take my second equation, and I'm gonna solve this for x. So let's go ahead and just rewrite it just as it is. And then really work on getting that x all by itself. So we can do that by moving the y to the other side. And we'll get 13 plus y. Okay, so we know what x is equal to. Now I'm going to take this and we're going to substitute it into the first equation. And we do that by essentially writing the first equation. But wherever I see that x, I'm going to replace it with this expression that we just found. So 3x is now going to turn into 3 times 13 plus y. Yep, that's what x is equal to. And let's write out the rest. Now that we've substituted, we want to solve for the remaining variable, and you can see that we only have y's left. So really now it's a process of solving for what those y's are. We'll start off that process by distributing through with this 13 here. So that'll be a 39 plus 3y plus 4y, still equal to 4. And we're off solving for this y component. Let's see, 39, uh, 3y plus 4y, that's a total of 7y equals 4. Let's see, subtracting the 39 from both sides, that'll give us a negative 35. And then dividing both sides by 7, we'll get a negative 5. Okay, so we have one of our variables, but now again we go through that substitute and solve process one more time. We do that by taking our value for y here, and we substitute it into either one of our original equations, like x minus y, or we can even solve it in this one, where we also have x isolated. Uh, I'm going to take it into this one, since x is already by itself. But again, it's just a, a process of substituting, substituting the y value we already found, and then solving for that remaining variable. All right, so that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and combine the 13 and the negative 5, and that'll give us an 8. And now we have our solution. We have that x is equal to 8 and y is equal to negative 5. Let's see this one more time uh, with one that has a few more fractions in it, just to show you that it really is that simple. All right, so like before, we're going to choose one of these equations and then solve for that particular uh, variable. It doesn't matter which one we solve for, so I'm going to take the second equation here, just write it out. And this time, let's go ahead and solve for y. No particular preference. You could solve for x if you want. Again, it doesn't matter. Let's see, if I'm going to solve for y, I should move the 3x to the other side. So there's a negative 3x. And then we'll go ahead and divide everything by 7. Now, this will give us some fractions, but I'm not too worried. Uh, we're just going to have to, uh, you know, move forward with this. That's going to be okay. So I have y is equal to negative 3 sevenths x plus 15 sevenths. Now that we've isolated y, we're on to that process of substituting and solving. So let's substitute this into our first equation. 3x minus 7, and here's where we come across the y, and we'll replace it with what y is equal to. So all of that looks good, still equal to 15. And now we want to solve this for the remaining variable. In this case, we're going to solve it for x. Like before, it looks like we'll have to do a little bit of distribution so we can get a better handle on one of those x's. No worries. Let's see what we get. So we still have a 3x here. Negative times a negative will give us a positive. Uh, this will give us a 21 sevenths, which reduces. They'll reduce to just a 3. Another way we can view this is that this negative 7 and that negative 7 will cancel out, and so we're only left with a positive 3x. All right, doing the same thing over here, negative times a positive is a negative. Sevens will go away, but we'll still have this 15. All right, excellent. Now we can combine these two x's together. 3 and 3 will give us 6x's. 
and I can add this 15 to the other side, so this will all be equal to 30. Dividing both sides by 6, we see that x is equal to 5. All right, now let's do this process one more time by taking the 5 and now substituting it into one of our earlier equations or even this guy over here. Oh, uh, let's see, where shall we put it? You know, last time I put it down here, let's go ahead and take it back to the original equation just for fun. So let's go 3 times 5 plus a 7y equals 15. And now we're solving for the remaining variable. In this case, we're solving for y. So 3 times 5 is a 15. Subtract 15 from both sides. This will just say 7y is equal to 0. Divide both sides by 7 and we have y is equal to zero. So this has a solution of x equals five and y equals zero. As you can see, the process is nice and simple, pretty straightforward. You just have to go through the process of substituting and then solving for that remaining variable, and you should be good. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.